introduce you to the 19-year-old writer, director, and actor, Emmanuel Azario. What's going on with you? Good. How's it going, Keith? Um, everything is going just fine here in L.A. Yeah. Um, how are you, though? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, as a matter of fact. Uh, took a spill. Took a spill the other day uh, in a car accident. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, because... Yeah, because of, you know, lawyers, I can't talk too much about it, um, you know, and give away the case. But I'm all right. A few bumps and bruises, but I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. Oh, okay. Absolutely. It's good to hear from you, though. It's good to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, listen, a lot of excitement behind your, uh, this is your debut project, as a matter of fact, Blase LA, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. How are you feeling about that? Are you excited? Oh, yes. I am so excited. Um, I can't wait till I'm behind the camera and I'm calling action. Yeah. What? Listen. What? What was your inspiration behind the film itself? Um. You know what? Uh. At first, uh, just even going about this film. Yeah. I. Um, I didn't know I was gonna be making Blase LA until I made the executive decision to go ahead and start producing it um but you know along the way of my life in general uh uh, you know coming from the background of uh, arts and music and um plays and uh screenwriting and stuff um it all just sort of set in itself in course for myself to be in the position um, to say that I'm going to direct this film. And so having the background of photography and um, just my artistic sense, um, that's what all ultimately led me to say that I'm going to make Blase LA. Now, you know, this is, Blase LA is the, the first film that you're going to, you're going to see to the people that you're going to give us that. Is it the first film that you've ever attempted to make, or has there there been you know times where you worked on some projects before and you just said, "Nah, this is not the one"? Or uh, no, um, I had made a short film for uh, my class, uh-huh. um, for my drama class. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I had never attempted to make a film. Right. Um, and that was just sort of a little stepping stone, um, as far as building the foundation for me moving on into the film industry. Um, but no, no, just as soon as I had the idea for Blase LA, I kind of just went with it. And like I said, given my knowledge, um, based upon my life and my artistic career, um, it's all just sort of led me up to this film. Now, what, if any, if any at all, what day-to-day issues do you feel like you, you might want to touch on in Blase LA? Um, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of subjects that I'm going to be touching upon, uh-huh. um, with it, especially within my generation. Um, you know, being 19 and growing up in Los, uh, Los Angeles, um, you know, I'm a native uh from LA, so I got to grow up and experience an authentic LA vibe and LA scene. Um, Definitely growing up, um, high school and middle school especially, everybody's obsessed with selfies and doing things for the clout and just, um, you know, making noise just to make noise. Right. And um, ultimately, I also want to showcase things and topics such as mental health in this film. Right. Because uh, I feel like that's a big aspect of today's society um, and what kids go through on a day-to-day basis. Right. Um, You know, not so long ago, we had the rise of the Internet within the 2000s, and then somewhere along the 2000s and up to leading up to now, which is 2020, two decades after. Right. Um, I remember midway there was a lot of uh, kids my uh, age growing up, maybe around their teens and preteens, um, who would often commit suicide 
or had suicidal thoughts due to the internet and um, people portraying themselves as um, people that they're not. Right. And so that's what ultimately, you know, something big that I want to showcase in, in Blase LA because um, that's part of the society that um, has come about. Right. Yeah. Um, and there, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of different um, subjects that I want to touch upon, but that's what's so interesting about Blase LA is that it's very uh, much so a versatile film where mm. everybody can enjoy it. And ultimately, everybody's going to get something different out of it. You know, that's good. It, and it, it'll be good to touch on that, too, because it, there's a lot of importance in that in relativity, uh, you know, just with the Hollywood scene and teenagers in general. And as you say, just, you know, everything from parental issues uh, to, to social life. And uh, that'll, that'll even give you a chance to touch on itch, issues like bullying and things like that, because... Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. yeah, ultimately, in the end, even issues like that become, you know, things that could cause mental problems for others. So that's a great idea because you cover such a wide variety of those who may need help. And that, that's going to be inspirational. Um, You yourself. OK, so you're going to be starring in this. one. Yeah, absolutely. The pressure. Is there any pressure? I, I mean, I know you've been here before because you've done theater as, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, coming into this, uh, I, I don't, I don't feel as much pressure. I don't feel a lot of pressure. Right. Um, I feel, I feel, yeah, there's a standard, a level of, uh, how should we say a level of caliber when it comes to my acting that I definitely want to showcase, um, and perform for the audience and for the people, um, but no, ultimately, you know, starring in this, I think it's it's more so. Uh, it's it's in my lane, and it's definitely something that I'm used to. So I, I don't think I don't think there's much pressure to it. How, how well how hard how well do you think you put yourself to the challenge in this one? Because you wrote it, and so you wrote yeah. the song. It so mm-hmm. comes to performing it. Do you do do you think you're putting yourself to the test on this one? Is it going to be a piece of cake for you, or any surprises for yourself in this? Or, um, you know, when it comes to writing and when it comes to acting, um, I I don't think of it as something where I try to test myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to just make these characters as true and authentic to to myself and to the viewers. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's about the storyline and it's about resonating with the viewers and the characters and connecting to their personal lives. So, um, you know, when it comes to acting, I, I like to make sure that I can connect with the character and make sure that I give my performance my all um but as far as challenging myself yeah um so you you got it. i yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's going to be that hard um just based upon my knowledge and uh the thing that the things that i've learned and been taught upon based on acting um I feel like I'm ready to tackle on any character, pretty much. And, and without without giving away too much, uh, uh, yeah. how do you prepare? How do you prepare for a role? How do I prepare for a role? Um, and, and it, I mean, well, you know, you know obviously, uh, no I right. think uh, personally, when preparing for any role, you want to make sure that it's something that you can connect with. And you want to do a lot of research on the character and a lot of research on their lifestyle. And basically, you have to know everything. It's kind of like you're being a stalker in a way. Um, but yeah, you got to do a lot of research. Um, you got to make sure it's, it's like you're becoming this person, this character. You're, that's who you have to li- live by, and that's what you have to show because when you're on screen or when you're on set and it's showtime, um, 
everybody has to believe that you are what you are. So what you're playing as has to be, you know, um, what's the word? It's got to be played off so cool and so chill that nobody questions right. Um, right. your acting. They kind of want to just put themselves in the moment. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um. Okay. Can't. With in Blase, LA, can we look for? Would it be? Would it be any tragedy that we can expect? Would it be some heartbreak? Maybe some romance? Or is anyone? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um. So with this film, you get to see everything from horror and mm-hmm. and goriness to comedy to romance. Oh, wow. to action and you get to see it all within this piece of art that I'm creating wow. and um, yeah it's just you know to be honest with you I just want to say grab your Chanel surfboard because this is going to be a wave making project you know I mean I'm not reinventing cinema or anything <laughs> but I will say um, my form of projection of art onto a screen is completely different right. than somebody else would do it. Right. And I feel the way that I'm going to convey right. these emotions and these scenes of romance and love uh-huh. as well as, you know, backstabbing, hatred, and action mixed with, um, oh, wow. uh, you know, a lot of different genres. And it's it's not... It's not just one thing that you can categorize it as. It's all, uh, you know, a fusion of this right. uh, eclectic vibe that you're getting from Blase LA. Now, talking, you know, speaking on the soundtracks and scores and things like that for the film. Uh, yes. Have you guys started working on that? Any any artists in mind so far? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, There's a lot of people that I have in mind. I mean, especially coming from L.A. Right. Every every piece of soundtrack has to be um, catching and appealing to the ear. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now, we're in the pre-production stage of Blase L.A. Um, So we're solidifying locations, um, uh, scouting locations, and we're solidifying music. Um. But yeah, this soundtrack has got to be a very, a very well uh, rounded mix of LA and the flow. Because when you think of LA and um, you think a lot of hip hop and rap, yeah. and that's uh, something that's a little bit challenging given the time right now. Um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't want to touch upon something that's not mine to touch upon, but right. um, this past year, we've had a lot of cases of um, a lot of rappers um, and incidents that have happened within the rap community and the hip hop culture. Right. Um, we've lost a lot of people and we've seen a lot of people go. Right. And, you know, it's it's just unfortunate to yeah. have people pass away, people that um, are role models, people that others look up to just within, I mean, just within their art, within, within their style of music, within what they resonate with um, our ears and the feelings that we get through these, through these beats and through these melodies and through these rhymes. Right. Um, and the syntax used to express and convey emotions and scenes that people have gone through. Um, but it's it's a little difficult to get soundtrack. I don't think it's difficult, but I just think it's a little challenging just because within this past year or so, we've had a lot of oversaturated and, um, you know, a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, and got to be. You know, going about with this, the soundtrack for this film, um, I really want to bring in that that uh, flow, 
right. of that LA lifestyle that um, everybody craves and loves. Yeah, you know, you guys are, are you know, it, it again is is good what you're doing. You know, bringing you guys' culture to the table because honestly, you. Speak you all spend a lot of time in the, you know, in the public side, a lot of things happen there. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's good that you'll be able to, to just bring the, the true lifestyle of what's going on there and things like that to the people and try to, you know, not only share the neg- negative side of things that's going on, but, but something positive. As a matter of fact, let me ask that question too. What, what will, what will people be able to grab positive from this film walking away from it? Mm, you know, Everything, every, uh, everybody's gonna grab something for sure out of this film. Pos- whether it's positive or negative, something that connects and resonates with their life, but ultimately something positive that they're definitely gonna get out of um, Blase LA is going to be to be themselves and to touch, touch base with their roots and with their culture and I want people to see the bigger picture and see what's really going on in front of them not just in front of their screens or their phones or their TVs Um, because right now we live in a society where all everybody cares about is the phone in their pocket and what's going on with social media and who's posting what and who just bought like the latest outfit (laughs) or who went to uh, so-and-so's restaurant to eat, you know, this and that just so they could post it on Instagram. And um, that's, that's uh, something big that's going on now. And that's um, something that I ultimately want to capture with, Blase LA, I really want to take this time in history because um, history is what we create on the daily basis. Yeah. And I just want to grasp that feeling and this whole generation and put it in a time capsule and put it on film for everybody so that all can enjoy and all can experience that LA life because you know, me being an LA native, I'm so fortunate to be living here um, because there are other people on the other side of the world that um, crave just to breathe the same air that we're breathing. Right. Um, and a lot of people in Los Angeles are blasé to that. So that's, uh, you know, something that I do want to showcase in this film. Now, are, are you, uh, okay, I got to get try to get a juicy secret out here. <laughs> are you gonna fall in love in this film? Is someone gonna well? Fall um, or? I can't speak too much about it. <laughs> uh, that's classified information. Um, we are in the pre-production stages, yeah. so um, if anybody's hearing this interview uh, right now or within the next couple of days, right. Um, you know, there's always a chance, a possibility of hopping on board, but, um, without giving too much classified information out, (laughs) um, like I said, Blase LA, it's going to have the love, it's going to have that romance, it's going to have the action, the eclectic, uh, you know, gunshots and, and, and just like, yeah. Fireworks, champagne, diamonds, you know, best of the best, chefs, uh, 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 you know, I mean, yeah. it's it's L.A. I mean, after all, it is L.A. It's one of the <clears throat> one of the most known cities and it's yeah. it's, you know, something that I want to showcase on the big screen. But as far as my character falling in love, <laughs> that's classified for now, Keith. <laughs> Hey, I was said I said okay. I was see if I can get this. Look, um, when, when, are you, when, when are you possibly, if you have any times in mind, when are you, what year, maybe twenty twenty, looking to to do a release or a blase LA or come again? Could you repeat what, that again? Are you what year? What, are you looking uh, maybe for twenty twenty for the release of blase LA or? Yes, yes. Um, so the goal with the film 
is it's going to premiere uh, at the Cannes Film Festival next year in 2020, so uh, May. Um, you know, and a big inspiration for that came from uh, Quentin Tarantino's uh, film that's coming out this year. He actually debuted it at the Cannes Film Festival. It's called Once Upon, in Holly- Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, and just seeing uh, the trailers really was a, a big, big inspiration to me. Um, his film took a year to make, so for mine to be, it's already in pre-production, it's going to take a year to make, and it's going to debut at the Cannes Film Festival, just like uh, his, um, you know, it's, 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 it's uh, like I said, now is the time, and with LA moving and changing and morphing into something bigger and better um, as time goes by, you know, with the rise up of the internet, time flies by so fast. And I feel like so many generations have been created just within this time period. Um, So I really just want to take this year to make this film um, because of how rapidly things are changing. You know what, Cannes Cannes Film Festival, I mean, mean, salute to all film festivals, but Cannes Film Festival, as we all know, is, is extremely big. How does it feel to be a part of the Cannes Film Festival? I mean, that's not a small thing. Oh, my God. I am so honored. Um, <laughs> you know, there's so many people that I'm, like, ugh, I'm highly and for the rest of my life will forever be grateful for uh, people such as Guillermo del Toro and Alfonso Cuaron and um, Alejandro Gonzalez for paving the way, as well as Robert Rodriguez. I mean, uh, Robert Rodriguez is the guy who made Spy Kids. Um, That's the big, big movie here in L.A. that um, a lot of my family members, uh, a lot of relatives and people that I knew, they loved, they got a kick out of that movie. And especially because we were all so young Mm -hmm. and we didn't... um, pay attention as much to the internet and we lived our lives outside and you know we got to enjoy our childhood so because of that and because of these films because of these latin directors that have paved the way for me you know i can't be so blasé about (laughs) the fact that i mean i'm i'm you know, just for me to even sit, say, hey, I'm going to direct a film and it's going to sh- premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, that's an, that's the- an honor in itself. It's such a prestigious yeah. um, film festival. And, you know, a lot of people would kill to be in my position. And I'm so grateful every single day to be in this position that I am. Mm-hmm. And... You know, for me, I'm not so blasé about it, but I feel as though if somebody else were to be in my shoes, I think they, I feel as though they would. Right. Um, but no, uh, I feel very grateful and very honored to um, just to even be saying that out loud. Yeah, I was going to say, I can imagine you at the cans, you know, everything. Like you say, some things are going to be so opposite of blasé, but then at the same time, you see, the thing about the Blase too is it also, I think it also speaks for the cool people, the chill people, you know? Yeah. Like the laid back, you know, like like happening cats. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a well-rounded title as much. Uh, you know, let me ask you this question before we get out of here. What effect, whether good or bad, do you feel as though social media or the internet has had on the film industry? Um, you know, I feel as though it's uh good. Mm-hmm. I mean, with everything there is good and bad. Um I I think if I think that social media has played a big role as far as uh branding and as far as marketing and showcasing uh, who you are and and what you are because uh, social media has become a platform for people to become influencers and uh, for them to become people uh, of power. And I think that with social media, there's a lot of people that take things too seriously. Um, Again, like I said, people need to see 
what's really going on in life and with um, even just with their next door neighbors, um, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of negativity. There's been a lot of positivity and I feel as though we need to showcase more positivity than negativity in this world. Yeah. And, um, I think it's I think it's been impactful. I think we can raise awareness and we can all become uh, a, a unified uh, part of society as as the internet and as social media um, changes into maybe something else. You know, with how fast technology is advancing, um, there's going to be robots soon in the near future. And not to get off topic or anything, but um, with the rise of the Internet, there's been more opportunities for people to be social with others and talk about different things that no one would really uh, touch base upon on a normal day-to-day basis. Right. Sometimes. And I think it's it's uh, it's brought the rise of different communities and people that like the same interests and that share uh, similar qualities with each other. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think it's been a good impact, even though, like I said, there has been negativity. Yeah. Um, you know, as as humans and as a society, I think that if we focus on uh, the bigger and the bigger, the better and the bigger picture, um, we can all change for good. You know, it's interesting because it seems like um, the whole, it seems like the internet itself and social media has given everyone a way to actually be blase LA, if mm-hmm. I, you know, in, in a kind of a way, because, you know, when you, you know, it's like when you speak about the internet itself, it, it gives people a platform to, to create their sales, to reinvent their sales, or you know, or, or just a vast uh, network of, of information where so many things, as you say, that would normally kind of shock us, uh, they're normal now. They're, they're mm-hmm. all blase, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And everybody's being who they want to be. So it, it's just interesting that you, you know, you, you, you know, you speak for so many people with that title because the internet, again, like I say, the internet itself is, is, is it's a blase LA kind of place. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very interesting. Uh, listen, what what can we expect? Uh, have you have any ideas for what you might want to work on next, or you know, is Blasielli, you know, lock and loaded right now? Where you're focused? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I've already thought. Um, uh, I've already thought of the probably like the next couple of handful of things that I'm going to be working on um, after Blasielli. Um, you know, with the debut of this film. Given that it is LA, um, you know, I want to showcase a lot of the a lot of fashion, a lot of photography, a lot of art, a lot of music, um, a lot of waves and movements that people have done, created and made. Um, because I feel like fashion is uh, another outlet of mine that I've used definitely to connect with others. Right. Um, you know, especially here in LA, everybody's all about the fits. Everybody's all about the gram, you know, who's posting what and who's wearing what designer. Um, and so I'm so fortunate enough to live that type of lifestyle where I get to, you know, I can easily go to Beverly Hills and, you know, physically see and touch what, uh, this, these fabrics and, um, you know, this couture and, and this fashion that, not many people across the world get to see and you know music music brings so many people together music festivals and concerts um and that's another way of showcasing people's art um i mean take a look at coachella and um these some of these other big uh festivals and stuff yeah the art itself so listen how much is to you again it's I, it's blase, but do, yeah, yeah. do you feel do you feel do you feel any pressure at all with with 
you know, what's expected of you to, to be brought to the table? Um, a little more, a little bit of pressure. You know, I felt as though every moment in my life has led me up to this subconsciously. You know, I didn't plan on being a film director. Um, it's sort of just, I feel as, you know, it's funny when, you know, you go about your days and you start thinking about the big picture and the end game and what you see yourself doing for the rest of your life. You know, growing up, I, I did everything from soccer and, and swim and lacrosse and all sort of uh, different ranges of sports. And then I got into music and photography and then, you know, design and fashion and architecture and um, just art and fascinated with the world. Um, going from begging my mom to take me to a set and, and, you know, working as a professional actor, but getting denied that option. And so, you know, I started acting in middle school, um, acting in plays, um, uh, and then to starring in plays, then to directing in plays. Um, and, you know, I've always sort of pushed my boundaries and pushed um, my limits and seeing what's the next big thing that I could occupy my time with growing up as a kid. Um, and so it, it's all led me up to this moment and I'm just ready to take on whatever I have to take on. Wow. Um, you know, I love solving problems and I love to lead the way. And I feel as though, like I said, every single form of art and anything that I've contributed to society with um, has led me to freely say, like, hey, I'm going to direct Blase LA. And, you know, with that, there's going to be some pressure there because, I mean, with anything, especially with the industry, Hollywood and, you know, Los Angeles, it, things come up, things come up. But um, ultimately, uh, as a leader... And having gone through uh, a lot of these situations, you know, I'm ready. It's nothing that I can't take on. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure, but it's nothing I can't handle, I would say. You know, every time we speak, the tone the tone has not changed. It's confident. And, and it's yeah. like, hey. And you know what? It As we talk again, Blase LA is such a great title, but I'm glad you're stepping outside of of the realm and you know and letting others know about the issues going inside and again to touch back on mental health issues i think that's going to be uh great oh listen gotta ask you. yes yes will there be any characters will there be any favorite characters in it i'm, I'm sure you're going to have you're the star you're going to have some favorites but will there will there be characters that, that you know the viewers will be able to relate to and say hey He's my favorite. She's my favorite. Yes, yeah, definitely. You know, with the rise of the internet, I've and the time that I'm living now, I get to see what uh, people are um, attracted to and unattracted to, and um, something big that has come up within these past years, and thankfully to the internet, is the rise of awareness within minorities and um because you know people like to spec come up and speculate up upon oh people of color don't get to play um big roles in films or oh people of color are portrayed as this and that you know ah, ah, ah. but you know with this film i'm gonna have a diverse cast and i get to ultimately showcase that everybody has talent in los angeles and that talent can be found anywhere um, across the globe, whether you're in a very big city like LA or with your li whether you're living in a small little village somewhere um, in an indigenous part of the world, there's talent everywhere. And with Blase LA, that's ultimately what I want to showcase. You know, um, people come from different backgrounds, whether you dance, whether you sing, whether you play an instrument, you act or you paint and draw. Um, blase is uh, blase la is a whole combination. It's like a gumbo of the world with people, and you know everybody's gonna get to relate to a character. 
nobody just wants, um, you know, uh, a regular Barbie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, okay, so you're going to the camp. I, I feel like you're going to walk away with something special. Do, do you have a, Do you have an acceptance speech ready, prepared already? Uh, any special what? Do you have an acceptance speech prepared already for the cans? For the cans? Um, yeah, I, I mean, um, I don't want to say I have an acceptance speech ready and, you know, ready and rolled <laughs> out. Um, but you, I mean, you know what they say, you know how Violet always says um, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm, I'm I mean even you know studying films these past years i'm just happy enough i'm just glad to get a seat at very prestigious films that i've seen and i'm glad to be able to be sitting down in those spaces and getting to soak up the knowledge um but yeah ultimately you know i'm i'm excited to premiere my film um you know i'm excited to compete against some of the best directors that i've uh, booked up to, um, you know, they, you know how they say they, it goes from, um, idolizing, uh, you know, these people to competing up against them. Um, and so it, it's, like I said, there is a little bit of pressure. Um, there's a little bit of competition, but you know, it's, it's all part of the industry at the end of the day. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's just an honor. It's like I said, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And Blase LA is just going to be this wave-making project. So again, grab your Chanel surfboard and be ready for it. For you, for you, for you, Emmanuel, you make it sound so. You know, for you, you it, it's your first time. But I swear, it just sounds like you've been here before in another life. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and you know, it feels like that to me as well. A lot of times, people ask me like. Oh, um, so what do you do? And I'm like, well, like, I mean, I have a whole list of things that I could touch base upon. But, you know, like I said, ultimately, I, I'm ready for this in every single moment in my life. And every situation that I've put myself into has subconsciously taught me film and has led me up to this um, gateway of creativeness um, that... Like I said, Robert Rodriguez, Guillermo del Toro, Alfonso Cuaron, and Alejandro Gonzalez have paved the way for me to, you know, freely say, hey, Blase LA, it's coming, May, Cannes Film Festival, you can't miss it. Right. <laughs> what social, uh, any social media handles? I know we spoke about Instagram before, but people can follow you. Which are the yes, yes. Uh, if you guys would uh, love to follow me, you guys can find me on Instagram at Emmanuel the Director. Emmanuel spelled E M M A N U E L. The Director. That's all one word. And um, for some reason, my Twitter uh, got frozen, um, so I haven't gone on Twitter, but. Right. Um, once I get all of those details, everything will be posted on my Instagram. Um, but yeah, be sure to turn on my post notifications and you can find me on Instagram. Uh, I Definitely, I got to ask before we get ready to get out of here, uh, any shout outs. I know I definitely want to give out a shout out to the amazing Chris Morrissey, of course. Definitely, definitely. Big, big shout out um, for plugging us up together because if not, you know, we wouldn't be having this interview right now. Absolutely. Chris is, Chris is a, a heck of a move and shaker. Um, any shout outs to, to any of, of cast members or just people involved in the film itself or, or you know, just any people you stand for? You know what? I just want to give a big shout out again to all the Latin directors and anybody in the Hollywood industry that is Latin and especially to a big shout out to Quentin Tarantino. Um, and the new Beverly for keeping it going after all these years. Um, I love going to the new Beverly and there's just a vibe about it that always inspires me every single day to keep on going with Blase LA. Well, look, listen, we look forward to catching Blase LA when it comes out. Also, uh, when you guys do do your casting, we're going to look forward to seeing who you cast for some of these roles because they're going to have their work cut out for them. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. And we're going to find out what happens with some of those questions. We'll, we'll probably talk again some more. I'll still try to get some more stuff out of you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> listen. Absolutely. As time, I, as time will tell. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, listen, you guys have an amazing night. Uh, everybody, you will be able to check the website, Source Magazine, to catch this conversation with actor, writer, and director, director Emmanuel Azario, with myself on here as well. Listen, Emmanuel, it's been amazing talking to you. You're doing great things. Um, and listen, we love you and, and take care. Thank you so much. Likewise, Keith. And uh, once again, if I didn't say earlier, uh, happy Father's Day. Thank you. It's been You're welcome. You're welcome. It, it's been an amazing, amazing day as a matter of fact. I um I had the opportunity to go to Toronto. Uh oh nice. Yeah, there's nice. some kids there. Um and, and it happened to be the the, the weekend that Toronto won the, the championship too, so that was pretty exciting. I got Okay. Super. Sweet, sweet. You had a good time. Yeah, it was exciting. I had to get out of there though. I I couldn't move around like I really wanted to. I was, you know, hurting so <laughs> Yeah. Uh but yeah, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was amazing. It was it was a uh, it was an amazing thing. Canada's a pretty cultural cultural place, um, and I'm I'm sure they'll be able to take a lot from Black. Listen, you know what? It's some. It, it, actually, now that we mention that, Toronto, Canada will will be you know would love to see Blase LA itself because um there's there's such a heavy film community there and a lot of people who are, are descriptive you know to LA people and to Hollywood seeing itself so. You know, mm-hmm. shouts out to them, and I can see the relevance, and we'll make sure we put them in touch too. Yeah, yeah, big shout out to them. I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say upon the film, uh, just because, like you said, they're all all up in the Hollywood industry, and you know, they gotta know what's what's up, what's going on, what's cracking, and fashion and, and everything like that. So it'll be good. Yeah. All right, listen, uh, we love you guys once again, and we'll be talking to you soon. Uh, have a wonderful evening and good good luck. Congratulations. And we'll be looking forward for the news at the Cannes Film Festival, too. Thank you so much, Keith. Look forward to hearing back from you again. We'll be talking.